I was on a six day canoe trip in Magnetowan River Provincial Park with my friends Derek and Jeff and my son Noah. In part one and part two of this canoe trip series, we paddled into the park from Harris Lake Marina to the park boundary. From there, we traveled east on South Magnetowan and then north on Timberwolf Lake, carried our gear overland on the 346 meter portage and then continued to canoe up to the Magnetowan River at the west end of Trout Lake where we camped the night. Then we continued our canoe trip traveling further west on the Magnetowan to Island Lake where we found a campsite not marked on the map and stayed for two nights. Well, it's the morning of day five. It's a nice, calm morning. And uh, we're just up having coffee. And yeah, so we'll move to another campsite later on. But uh, for now, we have uh, breakfast to take care of and pack up, sort ourselves out, and, and we'll get back on the water. Before we left our campsite, I wanted to have a look underwater around our shore to see what fish were swimming around. The day before, I caught a little pike from the spot, so wondered what else might be down there. This bass was a bit shy, but curious enough to check out the camera for a while. All packed up, it was time to get out on the water. It was a beautiful day, blue sky and calm river as we headed west toward the $30 rapids. Really, these are the perfect type of paddling conditions that we all hope for when we're on trips like this. Yeah, that's a waterfall. It wasn't long before we reached our first portage. Okay, so we've uh, been paddling, oh, probably only like 15 20 minutes so far and we've reached our first portage which is about 150 meters it's a really nice really pretty waterfall uh, i'll try to get some shots but there is a camp set up so i don't see the people i don't want to interfere with what they're doing um but yeah try to get some nice shots so you can see but yeah it looks really pretty Having completed the carry overland and with time to enjoy the view, we reached the other end of the portage and got back in our boats in time to continue to enjoy our morning paddle. Cue the music.
second portage of the day. It's just short, 50 meters about, and uh, just uh, another waterfall. Portage number three. After an hour or so of leapfrogging through a few portages, we arrived at the $30 rapids. Okay, so we just uh, reached the largest portage of the day, uh, 2,300 meters. Um, is that right? 2,300? Yeah, so 2,300 meters. And uh, we're going to get out, we're going to hike up, see if there's any other spots to pull out. Right now, there's definitely a quick current heading in. Um, can see some white caps and whatnot in there but we don't really know the terrain if it's possible to paddle down a little ways save us some of the hike then that's what we'll do otherwise we'll just unload and lug our stuff in hiking in and there's a train bridge um, so far what I see is it's pretty high bank so would suck to paddle in and then have to pull everything up the hill I can see a lot of white water over there by the train bridge so I think likely we're just gonna be portaging in but I guess as we hike we'll be able to see if there's any spots in between that we can put the boat in and maybe knock off a kilometer or something like that but Looks like it's going to be just a, a full uh, two and a half kilometer portage.
definitely a really nice view um, but not too sure about running it what do you think Noah I think that this is the only problem spot like the rest is fine it's just right under here is very... yeah right underneath the train bridge itself is like probably someone experienced in whitewater to be able to do this no worries but we're pretty limited you know class one class two no problem this yeah loaded up cedar strip canoe camera equipment i think i'll pass so noah's gone to get some gear and bring it to the other side of the railway track i'm uh, just down at the bottom of the other side of the railway track just checking out to see if we can put the boat in down here so you can see we've got the railway line there actually i think that's derek up on it now and uh obviously that's the section we want to skip over but we might be able to put the boats down in here and then run the rest of it but you can see further on there's quite a bit of chop down there so i'm gonna hike down further and check that out if we can put the boats in here then it'll save us a bit of uh, a carry Down at the end of this section, it's definitely fast moving. Um, can get a good scale of it standing down next to it. Be fast, be bumpy, probably gonna take on some water, but I think that we can do it. Um, my biggest concern, not concerned about the canoe at all, not concerned about uh, Noah or my safety, I think it's runnable. Um, I think most people could run it possibly tip go for a swim but the water's nice and warm everything really is good and fun <laughs> but i'm concerned about the camera equipment so i'm going to see if there's a way that i can waterproof my gear a little bit and if i can then that's what i'll do and i'll feel good about running this section after scouting out this section of the rapids, we all decided it was safer for us to portage down to the midway point. At the bottom, we took a moment to have a light snack before getting back into our boats. Derek and Jeff were the first to go. Not that bad. Yeah, pretty bumpy. bumpy but I don't think they've gotten wet.
see the V? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I see, see it. it. Looks like they've made it. Keep left. Oh. We just ran that one section, we piled down, then there's another section here. Uh, Jeff said he thinks that we'll be able to run it, but we just uh, got to this little side and let, we're gonna have a, a little look. Yeah, we didn't run it. We did the short portage and we're back in our canoes for a few minutes, but we're then back out for what would be the last but most difficult part of the portage. The trail through the final section was visible in most parts, but not heavily used. There were a few spots where it was easy to lose the actual path, but with the river flowing alongside, it was easy to know which direction to hike. Just follow the river. Okay, so that's the end of the last portage. We just need to pack up the canoes again, hit the water, and there should be a campsite somewhere just around the corner. Okay, so we're down. We found where we're gonna camp for the night. Um, truly, this is, I think, a pretty shitty campsite, um, but it is what it is. It's not horrible, but uh, I think we've been spoiled the last few nights and 
you know, there's just a lot of trees, not a great view and a lot of grass and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, whatever. I feel like uh, I'm bitching a bit about it, but I feel like with campsites like this, no wonder we haven't seen anyone down at this end. Um, it's a good thing it's a non-operating park because if it was operating, then I'd have a lot to say about that and that they should send people out to service the sites a bit, but it is what it is. So we'll make it work and uh, set up our camp, rest, have something to eat. After a night of rest and discovering an incredible number of slugs that lived at the campsite, it was time to move on and complete the journey. Let's go. The morning was quiet and we were feeling a bit worn out from the past five days and yesterday's long portage. It's the morning of day six and we're up a little early but still it's about 9 30 now and we've paddled over to the beginning of the last portage of the trip um it's gonna be about 1400 meters so we decided we'd get an earlier start of the day get out you know get to work and hopefully it's a nice day later on we'll be able to get to uh, larger lakes and hopefully have a shore lunch and take a break after all the the hard work on the portage so this is a uh, just a little view of where we are now So as you can tell, still very pretty and, uh, you know, we'll see how the portage is. I think it's mostly going to be buggy and uh, downside to it is 1400 meters, obviously long distance, no water source along the way, not that I know of. So we're going to be packing in the water and uh, just a little bit of extra weight, but 1400 meters, you know, it's going to take an hour hour and a half probably to accomplish and then we'll just continue. The trail itself was easy to follow, but conditions were extremely damp and humid. The mosquitoes became relentless through here, and we were all just happy to reach the end. Ooh, nice. It was a difficult last couple of days to finish up what was otherwise an incredible week out with the guys, paddling, exploring, fishing, and just enjoying life and each other's company out on the trail.
we'd have a lot of good memories from this trip. Wednesday, the day we traveled between sites. That was my favorite. Just the rapids along the way and swimming. Fishing was cool. My favorite part of the trip would be the fishing in that second campsite. Just basically the whole middle two days, I think. Okay. I would think the favorite part of the trip was catfishing, for sure, hardcore. I mean, bass are okay, but catfish, then you're talking. <laughs> My favorite part of the trip. Well, I think my favorite part of the trip was when we 